Uh, my name is uh, my name's Walter, and I'm from Taiwan. Uh, we uh, we host a uh, SCA Taiwan meetup, and uh, I'm one of the organizers. So, uh, if you guys happen to be in Taiwan and wants to give a talk, DM me. My uh, Twitter DM is open. So today we're going to talk about Bengal. I mean, Bengal is um, it's a pet project of mine. It's uh, it's not really a library yet, and it probably won't be, but uh, uh, basically I'm just trying out uh, Scala 3's new features, trying to write a uh, functional type class uh, library that uh, sort of mimic uh, cats. And uh, so, so the title, Bengal.dcats. So here's today's agenda. I don't think we can go through all of them, so uh, I'll try to uh, get to the important stuff. Uh, all right, first of all, the, we all know the Scala 3 is coming, right? So uh, uh, basically, I think the feature is going to be frozen by fall this year, and uh, so the M1 will be out this fall. And officially, it should be come. It should come out a year later. I mean, I I got this information from from Martin's uh, keynote just two weeks ago, so it should be pretty fresh. Uh, Martin has been or, and the team has been working on this for the past five years, so it's not just something that they came up. And uh, and uh, the uh, developer release, they release it every six weeks. So I think that's it's very nice, and we can try out new new things every six weeks. Now it's on 0 0.16 RC3, I think, and it's quite usable. Uh, and so it has really good integration with uh, VS Code. I'm I'm sorry, the uh, Emacs and Vim is. Uh, uh, it should ignore that. I mean, I thought I was talking about Metals, but it's not. So just just VS Code for now. Uh, it uses the same standard library as Scala 2, so that's good. And uh, and right now, even right now, you can use Scala 2's uh, library, most of them, uh, as long as there's no macro involved. So basically, I mean, I'm, I, I was able to use CAT's library so uh, without the macro bit, so that's pretty good. And uh, there will be some code rewriting tools available for, uh, for Scala 3, so to, uh, to dampen the migration pains. And in the future, actually, the uh, Scala 2.14 2 uh, will be able to uh, use uh, Tasty. So basically, we'll, we'll have a two-way interoperability. We can use, we can use uh, Scala, uh, library that's written in Scala 3 in your Scala 2 projects and Scala 2 libraries in Scala 3 projects. So... Uh, I think that's that's a very uh, very good uh, thing to do. <laughs> so what Bengal is not? Uh, Bengal is not a cat, all right. Uh, of course, and it's not cats or Scala Z uh, clone either. Uh, and it's less than minimum type uh, class library, functional type class library. I'm just doing this thing to demonstrate the uh, Scala three features. That's all. <laughs> So let's see. Uh, first, we will we'll see this uh, this uh, ADT, uh, and uh, I think yesterday we had a talk about Scala three, and and I think the the speaker went through all the uh, important bits, and this is I think Enum is probably one of the most important ones for uh, for beginner and intermediate and even advanced. Uh, uh, developers, because it's it makes it so easy and makes uh, the uh, the uh, the ADTs or GADTs for that matter, we can define them really easily. So say maybe you can you just define two two cases and you're done. So uh, and what's even good better about this is uh, the the just or the empty the type is maybe the type is not just. 
or empty like Scala to the typist, maybe. Right. And top level definitions. Yeah, that's uh, so we don't have package objects anymore. And uh, basically, you can put types, you can put type aliases, vals, vars, or functions in the top level. And extension methods. Now we're getting into the, the good stuff. All right, so we have a, uh, we have a monoid and the usual suspect, empty and combined, but uh, combined basically, it's, that's the uh, extension method, right? So uh, we can define, you can use it, you can, uh, you can define like, like so. So basically, you will have this combined method. So you can you can say you can say uh, uh, x dot combine whatever, right? And uh, this uh, this uh, plus uh, operator alias as well. So that's that's a really nice uh, way to do your uh, uh, monoid definition. And that's that's it. I mean, you don't know the you don't need the uh, implicit class and all. And for for defining uh, that was um, that's the trait. And for defining instances, we have delegates. Delegate. And this delegate thing, I mean, they uh, they change the keyword every so often, and it, it was like implied, but now it's delegate. But uh, anything would do. I mean, I think the the. The syntax, it's really nice, I think. Oh, they switched the syntax as well. I mean, it used to be that, that uh, you, you can, the given can be in front of four, but now you has, it has to be following the four. So here is, um, so we're defining monoi for, for option A, given monoi of A, and you can just do the definition. Or if we're defining uh, monoi for, for a tuple, you can do that. Right, so you can, and this given can be anonymous. So this is sort of like you have an implicit monoid A instance here, or it can be named, and you can use the name, right? Uh, I think we can look at some code now. Um, let me see if, uh, if the ID is working. If not, we'll use Adam. Oh, come on. Great. Okay. Readable? Uh, all right, so this is monoid, and we can see um, that's uh, we can, you can ignore the bottom part for now, and let's see the usual stuff we have. Um, so this is functor. That's how you define it. Uh, just just a single. Um, single extension method there and you're done. And uh, so what, what derived uh, from fun functor? So we have applicative, right? And that extends functor, so that's it. Or uh, we have monad, and monad extends applicative. And you have, we have flat map, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's the usual thing, but uh, with uh, extension methods, it's a, it's a lot easier, a lot simpler, and more elegant, I think. And so now let's talk about delegate imports. So uh, in Scala 3, uh, import and import delegate, there are different things, all right? So uh, the usual import will just import the usual stuff without the delegates. Right, so uh, if you want to import, import delegates, you need to specify import delegate 
to import the specific delegate. That's one thing. And another one is we can even import delegates based on the, the, uh, the, uh, um, the type. All right, so you can have, say you have delegates for, um, So here uh, we have we have um, we have delegates for applicative and for mo for monad and stuff, right? So you can say for so for the uh, to import the the just the delegate for monad, you can say for monad uh, whatever. So you'll just import all the delegates for monad only. So you can import based on the type. So that's that's really nice. So just remember that the imports are uh, import and import delegate, they are two separate things, and you, you need to do them separately. Uh, implicit parameters. So these are the, uh, the given. The given is the implicit parameter, right? So you can have, you can have named ones or the uh, unnamed ones. So let's say we have uh, delegate global for universe, and that's, that's some object universe and context, right? So if you do this, then if you do FABC, then you'll try to find the universe and context that fits, that, that, uh, that's in the scope. And so if it can find both of this in scope, then you'll, this will compile. And if you want to specify specific context, then you need to do, use, it, use this context, right? Yeah, use this syntax. So F, A, B, C, given CTX. And, if, and you can have more than two implicit parameter lists, unlike Scala 2. So if you, uh, the second list, uh, you need to specify like so. So two given, right? I think this is a lot more clear than, uh, than before because uh, otherwise you need to do the apply thing a lot of times. Uh. Ex export classes, I think this is really good too. Okay, let's see, uh, we, have a, we have a delegate, we are defining an instance, uh, a, a list functor instance here, and then to define a, a, a applicative list instance given a functor list, we can just import f, all right? When you do this, ex oh, uh, sorry, export f. So you, when you do this export f, basically what it does is it's exporting all the f methods. So uh, for f, the method is map. So here, for this uh, instance, it has pure, it has this ap me method and also this map method. Right, so you don't need to you don't need to do the um, do you don't need to do the, uh, a lot of the boilerplate anymore. Right, you ju you just do export and it'll just export. So this is applicative, and then for delegate uh, of uh, uh, a monad uh, given applicative, here you just export a and you, we get map, we get uh, pure, and we get app. All exported of here. All right, so that's it's very convenient. I think this is one of the uh, more uh, 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 overlooked features of Scala 3. I think this is this is really good. Yeah, sure. It, it just speak louder. <laughs> the same method? Do I get an error or is there any kind of resolution mechanism? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> this is a minimum project. And, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure the compiler will complain. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for, for type lambda, lambda uh, we have a uh, delegate for, for uh, mona, uh, monad of function one. And here we can have uh, we can have a type lambda, right, for, for, for x here. So um, I think this type lambda syntax for, this, for such a simple uh, type 
it's a, it's a little verbose. And I think I'm, they're thinking about doing the uh, kind projector thing, right? So uh, basically, this might be turning into I fat air correction sign, all right, in the future. I mean, in the, f uh, near, in the near future, I think. But, but for now, we can, we can do proper type lambda now without, without the uh, kind projector plugin. Uh, opaque types. Oh, this is this is nice too. This is like Haskell's uh, new type. So we have we can define then a uh, opaque type, say some int, which is type alias to int. But this is opaque. So in the, the in the uh, it used to be that uh, you need to define this, define this this this. Um, uh, so in this companion object. Uh, some in in its companion object, some in it's treat, been treated by the compiler as int. All right, so you can apply x. Uh, you can you can you can uh, call apply with an int. It'll return you a some int, but basically it's just x because that's it's the same thing. But for for um, uh, outside of this companion object, you cannot do that. Outside of this companion object, some int and int, they are all diff they are completely different things, right? But uh, it used to be that uh, in the companion object you can do this, but I think now they changed it so that in the same file that this opaque type is defined, you can do it. All right. So this is uh, so basically we have some int without any wrapper, right? So uh, you can use this this uh, specific type, but you know uh, the compiler will not put a wrapper around around int. So it's very uh, efficient. Uh, type class derivations. Uh, this is really cool too. I mean, it uh, basically we can derive. You can derive, say, maybe, right? We, we saw this in num earlier, and we can derive uh, uh, equal from it. This is built in. This is, uh, this is built into the uh, Scala 3, 3 library. But here, the functor, uh, this is our functor, right? So uh, we can also derive functor from this without writing any code, without writing the delegate, all right? Uh, this 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 feature I know it, I know I can do it right so they have this uh, type class uh, derivation uh, document in the uh, on the uh, on the website but I couldn't really figure it out I mean the documentation is really really uh, uh, it's not that clear but uh, just just last week I think I saw the uh, I'm, I saw Miles Sabin's talk uh, at Scala days. And he had one of his, uh, uh, he has a shapeless, shapeless three out. And that compiles to a uh, uh, dotty. So I use that s and to implement this, uh, to do this driving. And it's, it's so simple, I can show you guys. Let's see. Okay, let's say monoi. Monoi here, I, I import uh, I import shapeless, of course, and uh, and and for uh, for for you to be able to use the drives uh, uh, the drives uh, uh, clause, you need to be able to define in the companion object of monoi a derived method. Right, and the derive method has to return the instance. So here, basically, I use um, I use shapeless threes uh, uh, pr uh, method provided to uh, to do this to do this uh, monoid gen thing, and that that will give me the uh, the monoid a. So basically, uh, shapeless threes is generating the uh, 
needed mono instance for me, but it makes it so simple. I mean, that's it. That's that's all you need to do. So this way you can have you can have uh, different mono. I can show you an example. So here we have a case class. Uh, it's called manifest with weight and items. Right, items is a list of strings. So we have two manifests. One is uh, uh, is ten whatever ten kilos with uh, two items and twenty kilos with uh, two items. So if I combine them together using monoid, because this this uh, manifest is, it drives monoid, so I can use this combine thing, the monoid combine thing, and it will give me a, a manifest of thirty kilos with four items in the list. All right, so it's, and there's, all you need to do is do uh, specify drives mono and that's it. And also same thing happens to uh, functors. Uh, so if, let's say this box, uh, we say it's a functor, right? So, so we have two boxes. And uh, we can map over them and do that. I and mean, this everything works here. And that's without defining uh, any delegate for 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 a monoid of of box. Uh, but um, there is still a little uh, issue around this uh, shapeless three thing. Uh, uh, it does not, uh, it doesn't really work with, uh, with extension methods yet. It doesn't work with extension methods yet, so I need to define a underlying functor that's, that's, that does not use uh, extension method, and then uh, delegate whatever uh, drive thing to, 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 this, to this instance. But, uh, other than that, everything works. And I have an issue here, and basically, they, uh, Miles says that, uh, yeah, they, uh, he knows about this issue, and they, they, they will fix it. Oh, we are... Oh, we're pretty quick. All right, so uh, this is, but we have, I have something extra for just for moments like this. Uh, uh, local co coherence. This is one of the really big things, I think, and it's also overlooked. I don't know why. Uh, okay, let's say, This is, uh, let's see. This is from uh, Elderberg Chang's uh, paper. Uh, he wrote, he had this paper and uh, it, it highlighted the, uh, the Scala 2 Encoding for for this uh, for for type class for functional type classes, there is really a big wart. Uh, let's say we have functor and we have monad that extends functor and also traverse that extends functor. So if we have a function that uh, that requires both monad and traverse, and without this this line here, without this line here, the compiler will will complain. The compiler will complain about ambiguous type classes because both this uh, monad and traverse uh, uh, uses the same functor, and the compiler does not know which one it should pick when when it when they call this a uh, knee functor, right? So uh, it's sort of like a diamond program for 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 OOP, but this is for this is for functional programming and we also have the same problem so uh, for 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 MTL for cats MTL they they need to do different encodings to work around problems like this but now uh, 
with this with this delegate four thing, this is what they call the uh, 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 delegate alias. We can basically we can import this monad f, and this this delegate has the highest priority. So with this higher priority, the compiler is able to solve the problem of which, which functor I should use. So basically, we don't have the uh, ambigu ambiguous uh, problem anymore. So let me show you the, uh, let's say, So this is uh, this uh, this is a list uh, 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 li list type classes for uh, for options. No, I mean I'm sorry. Uh, uh, option uh, option type classes for uh, for all this uh, uh, functional type classes. So see here we have we can uh, say oh not here. I'm sorry. We showed this already. Um, okay, test two. So this test two, uh, we need uh, we need monad and we need traverse, right? So so all I need to do is do this delegate for monad monad f. It's m. This takes the highest precedence, and all this flat map map things work. All right. So um, before you need to, um, before this doesn't work and you need to do a lot of different encodings to, to make this work. But now the, uh, with this, I think the, the, the type class definition for functional classes are so, so uh, simple and so clean. Uh, Yeah, so this is an uh, example of how all this work, but I mean, trust me, they work. But uh, there is another issue that I found. Uh, this tuple combined with another tuple uh, does not, the compiler doesn't work. I mean, the compiler errors out without this uh, type annotation, but yeah, they're on this as well, so. So uh, overall, I think my experience with uh, Scala 3 has been fairly pre pleasant, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that uh, the migration should go pretty well as well. So uh, I think we can uh, start, uh, start, start to try Scala 3, and they make it really easy. Uh, let's see. So on my slide here, uh, this is the project, and I have uh, simple instructions for you to get started to uh, to actually run this. Um, basically, you need to clone this, and also need you need to clone the uh, the uh, shapeless three project from from Miles, and you need to build it locally, and everything should work. All right. Uh, we have ten minutes. Any questions? Is there, a, in your example of deriving the type class instance, mm -hmm. is there a good way to control which monoid instances are going to get picked or which instances for the internal? So you picked the sum inst uh, monoid mm -hmm. for int. Right. Is there, a, in Haskell, you can use via to control right. which monoid would get picked for that? Right. Is there a way to do that? Uh, uh, no, basically you are uh, here. Let me show or is you. it just in the scope of the deriving method? Uh, yes, it's in the scope, and and also in the um, all right. See here, here is the uh, sum sum int, and uh, we have uh, prod int, right? And so both. Uh, so if you put delegate here, uh, basically the uh, if you put delegate, this is one of the uh, weird things that I couldn't figure out. Uh, when I after I import this wrap ints, 
I don't need to import delegate, and this delegate is imported. Uh, but this is, is probably one of the uh, special cases they do for, for opaque types, right? But um, basically, so if I if I import if I import uh, wrap in, then you get sum in and you get prod in. So with sum in, the uh, combined as addition, and with prod in, the combined is multiplication. So basically, you can just import this and uh, just do it. And this sum in and Uh, um, so you have manifest with int. Yeah. Let's see. Um, here, you just use it like this. Yeah, so in your deriving example, right. you have manifest with oh, int. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, do you, so do you have to change the type to get a different model instance? Yes, yes, you do. You do. And you, yeah, go ahead. With the type class derivation, mm -hmm. what is what comes from Scala three and what comes from Shapeless? I guess it doesn't need Shapeless necessarily, right? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It just makes it hell of a lot easier. <laughs> That's all. Okay, and uh, can you show on the type class derivation example what yeah. comes from Shapeless and what comes from yeah, Scala three? Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry. So in, uh, so only this uh, this drive is required by Scala three. So you need in in a companion object you need to define this drive method. Okay? So that's the requirement, and then everything follow that. This is all. Uh, so here I delegate this to this underlying f, and underlying f is underlying functor. So ev everything here is is uh, shapeless three, and that's pretty much it. So uh, basically, functor. Uh, uh, so you need this. You need a uh, uh, functor of ID, and you need uh, you need this method here to generate this uh, functor instance, and also a drive method for this this underlying F, right? And then we delegate the the real functor drive through this. That's all. And uh, so this is because the underlying functor thing is because, uh, uh, as I said, shapeless 3 does not handle the extension method well yet. So we, can, we don't use extension method here. But, and then here we, we, delegate, we delegate the drive to the, uh, under, uh, to the underlying functor instance. But in the in the near future, I think the um, extension method should work. Will work. Yes. To the slide which explain the delegate mm -hmm. and the given function. Okay. Um, yeah, this here, here, okay. here one. And uh, uh, it's very nice to we. Uh, it's very nice that we can uh, uh, define multiple given clause mm -hmm. in the definition. Yes. But uh, is it is the order of this explicit given matters? I I mean, what if we write f a b c given c t x given global or uh, can I combine mm. the given clause uh, like f a b c given global comma c t x or something? Yes, uh, uh, the the order matters. So you can. I think if you do. Uh, let's see, if you want to give both of them, then the order matter. Mm -hmm. But if you only want to give one, then then just give one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, so if you want to give both, but you cannot do, you, you need to do given global, given CTX. You cannot do given global, comma, CTX. It, no. It's not allowed. No, okay, it's not allowed. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, 
uh, I cannot get the export f dot mm -hmm. and bar. Okay. So <laughs> please. Let's see. Uh, export here. So export f uh, basically it exports whatever is public in f. Yeah. Whatever method or val that's public in F. So uh, what's F? F is a functor of list. This is a functor of list. So basically it exports this method right here. So you yeah. can imagine that without this export F, this method will be right here. Uh, that's all. So... Uh, and, and that way, uh, so af after yeah. it exports, so basically this way, it satisfies this uh, applicative trade, right? Applicative trade, it, it needs map, need, needs pure, and need, needs a AP. So without this export F, the compiler, the compile will fail because it does not have this map method. Oh, so uh, scars we are the the method uh, mm -hmm. right in scala to the implicit tree right right yeah, they're so the pretty much the same thing yes so this expose f dot uh, means like uh, using the f dot map uh, no because no. this given it's already named it's already named, yeah. so I don't know. I don't need to use oh. the right. But if it's if it's not named, if it's just if it's anonymous, oh, yeah, then yeah, I need yeah. to do export the bracket functor oh, yeah. list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, I got, it. I got. It. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. In this example, can mm -hmm. the f be can, can that f be like replaced with any uh, arbitrary expression? Uh, or is it just the object? I think f, f uh, yeah, it, f has to be some, op uh, you can export f dot map, f dot whatever. Yeah, you can export, expl uh, uh, you can list the, uh, the methods so if you like. So it's more of like, the import. Yes, in the state. opposite of import. Uh, okay. That's why it's I called see. export. <laughs> Any more questions? All right, thank you.